welcome to the session greeting of the day in the bulk deformation process in the bulk deformation process we have seen about what are the types of rolling rolling and types of forging and types of extrusion these are the various available bulk deformation process to make the changing of shape or reduction volume will be same but we are pressing compression into the plate format or thickness reduction to increase the strength factors so those things can be done by this three rolling forging and the extrusion process now we will continue with the remaining part in the previous class we have seen about what are what is extrusions and what is hot extrusion, cold extrusion, some, some definitions we have seen in the previous sessions. Now, the remaining part of classifications you will see. I am dividing as like, as like of the forging treatments, as like of rolling. Here also, I have been able to divide in terms of, divide in terms of operating temperatures. What are they? The extrusion can be takes place at the hot extrusions. Extrusion can be takes place at a cold extrusions. This is one. And one more, by terms of equipment, I am fitting some equipments in the industries. In terms of horizontal setup, these extrusions we are sending here the, and we are pressing the billet, it should come out. Therefore, it may be the horizontal setup. Horizontal setup machine can be there. In such a way, it is, it is horizontal. Otherwise, it may be vertical also. I am putting the billet at the top and I am pressing from the top and it, the billet or frames or pro product is coming down. It may be vertical also. The machine can be horizontal, machine can be vertical. So it is independent. So th this, are, this is one type. I am dividing the extrusion process in some terms. The terms may be temperature, the terms may be equipment. And the, the very important part, I am Dividing the extrusion process in terms of uh, directions. What is this? We have to see. This is important. This we know hot and cold, up or down, horizontal, vertical. We know this. Here, the direct or forward extrusions, the indirect or backward extrusions, we should see. It means when the material is putting in this direction and it is pressuring over there, the product comes in the other end. We are putting in left left end of the product pressure and it is forwarded and the product comes in the right side, right end, other end. That is called it is a forward, it is keep on going. But here in the indirect or backward extrusions, when the, the material is put in here and we are pressing takes place in this direction, the material here will be the die and it should it, it will impinge and it comes in the reverse format as a cup. Likewise, a tumbler you can take. So that all comes under the backward extrusion. The force applied on the same direction for force, the product comes is called as a forward extrusions. What is a force applied? The product comes opposite to that we are calling as a backward extrusions. One by one we will look over. So number one, I have taken as a forward or a direct extrusion process. The metal billet is placed in the container. Yes, we know we have kept inside the container. We have kept the material here and the driven through the die by the ram. We have a die also here. This is a, about a die which is a going to and we know this is the part where the material is going to come out. The dummy block is present. The plate is placed at the end of the ram. So here we have keeping some frictional devices, a dummy block and this having the ram to push over. So this billet have to come there. So this billet have to come there. So this is the die. So this is the die part. We understand. So friction is at the die and the container wall. This word is very important word. The friction is at the die and the container wall. You see, when I am pressing from left to right, the entire billet is available throughout here. The billet is here. The billet is here. It should come out like this. In terms of pipes or in terms of rod, it should come out like this. 
So what happens? I'm talking about here the friction, and this friction is, is nothing but a contact between one end to another end. It means it is contact between the billet and the surface also. So this contact makes a grip over on the material, and we should overcome the grip to take out the material at the other end. It is filled. We have a material. It is a material, and we have a container here. We have a container here. You see, we have a container here over there. So this two are in contact here. There is a friction takes place. Here there is a friction. Here there is a friction. Therefore, when when we want to take the material outside, we should remove this friction and we should come out. It is grip. What we have to do then? Where is the where is the friction here? In this material, the friction is in. This is a bit I told. Friction is here. Friction is created here. Friction is created at the surface. Friction. This this is about the on the container. So I told this part belong to die. This is belong to die. This is belong to die. When we proceed on the container, we have a friction contact. It is acting as grip. It is acting as a grip. We need more force. At the same time, this billet is also in contact with the this die surface, as you see, die surfaces, and then comes out. It is also having the friction. It is also having the friction at the die surfaces. This is the die surface. Now we understand. This all red zones belong to frictional contact with the container. This is the frictional contact with the container. This zone is the contact with with the die. So this happens both. This both together needs more pressure because it is gripping action takes place. More pressure to push this billet outside at the inner condition itself. So it, it takes more force. That is the point that we, we should understand from here. I want to explain few parts here about this. So we have this is the billet number one. It is a billet which is coming here. It is a billet which is a product. Which is come here, and number two is a die. You see, this is a number two is a die. Number three is an attachment, die attachment, and number four, number four is the billet, red hard billet. Billet number five is a dummy block. To, uh, this dummy block is to avoid the more frictional contact between the ramp and the red hot billet. Otherwise, this will damage the corrosion will take place. Therefore, we are putting some dummy block and also it uh, it avoids uh, the leakages. This dummy block will avoid the leakages. This three and the five will avoid the leakages. See three die attachment and dummy block. This avoid the leakages. And number six is the ramp. So these things. Number seven and eight are frames. Seven and eight are frames or extrusion frames. Extrusion frames that we are using a general attachment of a direct extrusion process. What we are doing? This is this is a direct extrusion. I have I am pressing here. I am pressing in this direction. It comes here, and in the forward direction, how it's itself it is coming out. It itself it is coming out. So for this, I'm naming this as a direct extrusion process. If it is indirect extrusion, we have a holes that it will, it will go like this, and will receive the product here. We will see the image. So forward extrusion, some flow chart we understand how it is happening. Hot metal billet is placed in the container. Placed in the container. Yes, hot metal is placed here in the container. A compressive force are applied on the metal billet by a ram hydraulic drive. So this uh, we are applying the compressive force on the die through the ram on the billet. A compressive maybe that is operated through hydraulic. A compressive force will make a metal advance in the continuous air and then through the die opening. Where is the die opening? This point is a die opening. So this during this die opening, the materials will come out. 
So first uh, as a flow chart, hot metal placed in the container. Yes, it is placed inside the container. Metal is processed by the ramp. We are pushing. Metal will advance in the container on the other side forward. Extruded metal will further be processed for secondary treatments. It is extruded as a lengthy pipe. I no need of the lengthy pipe. I need a short pipe. I am cutting. I need a, another lengthy pipe. I am leaving and cutting. So some secondary treatments can be done there. After that, metal will flow through the die opening through the how long it is present. Now, one we have seen as forward extrusions. Now we are coming to the second one of indirect extrusion process. How? The hollow ramp containing a die is kept stationary and the container with the billet is caused to move. You see, here the container is fixed. This container is fixed here. With this container, what I am doing, I have to place the fillet, I place the billet inside and the die is here as usual, die is pressed inside. Die is going to move. Here the ramp is the other end. Ramp along with the die and moving. Billet is not moving. Earlier I have told you there is a contact here. This is the contact zone. So this is the contact zone. Throughout when the piston from here it is moved forward. It is moving. Here the material is moved, here the material is moved, here the material is moved, and it went inside. But it is not happening like this here. Here it is, it is different. It is not happening. These things are not happening. These things are not happening there. Here the condition is different. What it is, this all are ideal as it is. I am not disturbing. The frictional force between the container and the billet is constant. There is no change. But where is the change occurring? The change is occurring here. You see? When the die open, when the die is pressed, this this zone, this zone is going to get in contact. This zone is going to get in contact. And the material which is available here, here it goes. And the material available here, it goes and extruded. First stage. Second, again I am pressing. This material is going to get in contact, this zone and this zone going out. This zone, this zone going out. So likewise when it is slowly it is moving, the zones are all not affected. Here is what we have seen, we have the ramp in this end, we have pressure from the 0 to point to the 10th point. Now what I am doing, at the 10th point I am pressing. So it, it itself comes, that's it. And it's, it itself comes over. Forward direction, we have pressure from here, from the 0 to 10th point we have the contact here. And this content is keep on moving, it's keep, content is keep on moving. It wanted to move, it creates more, more frictional pressure. But here there is no need of such pressure. I need the frictional pressure here, this length is reduced, this frictional pressure is reduced. Only I need a di-frictional pressure, that only I am applying. So forces, forces, half of the forces are automatically reduced in indirect extrusion methods. So this is better than the top forward. When the force is not required, most cost effective, those things we can um, force is reducing. Obviously, we know we no need of uh, utilizing the large equipment for the force. Generation, generation of uh, 1 megapascal or 10 megapascal force is not that much easy, it is much more difficult. Therefore, here hollow ramp containing this is a hollow ramp, you see, this is like a ramp, like a pipe we are pressing in between, it is containing it, it is it's understood as it is a hollow ramp. It may be hollow ramp or somewhere uh, to our uh, person. So likewise, likewise we understand. Hollow ramp containing the die is kept stationary. Die is kept stationary and the container with the billet is caused to move. Container with the billet is caused to move. The friction at the die only no relative movement at the container. No relative movement at the container wall. No relative movement, the no relative movement at the container wall. So here there is no relative movement. Here there is no relative movement. Content a roughly constant pressure, therefore roughly at a constant pressure, hollow ram limits the application of loads. So you see, I have told you the force is less as compared to the force is less as compared to the direct extrusions. Here 
the ramp travel speed from the initial point. Here the ramp travel speed from the initial point I have taken. Initially, this is the extrusion pressure we are applying. For direct extrusion, how much applying a force? I have direct extrusion forces we need more because more friction contact with the container with the die. Two, two, two objects are in contact with the billet. So we need more friction to overcome this force, frictional force. We need a force of extrusion force, extrusion pressure, which is to be more than that of the frictional forces. Frictional forces are attracting one with the container, one with the billet, one with, sorry, one with the die. Second one, here the indirect extrusion. See what happens? This is because of container and die. This is only by die. So what happens here itself? The force, half of the force is reduced. The container is not there. Therefore, I am using the indirect extrusion. Half of the it is reduced here. You see, this force is reduced. Here we have this much. Here we have half of that. So force can be reduced in the indirect extrusion methods. Now, few points I am adding here. We have seen about this uh, direct what it is and indirect what it is. I am again I am dividing this hot and cold extrusions into some other classifications. You see, hot can be hot can be and hot I am dividing as a Heart can be divided as a forward or otherwise as a backward. Now, similarly, the cold can be divided as a cold can be divided as a forward, forward or otherwise backward. Yes. Now, what I am doing? I'm forward, I'm dividing one more time with a hydrostatic hydrostatic extrusion extrusion methods. And this backward extrusions I'm dividing again one more time as a cold extrusions. This comes from cold, you see, backward and cold. Cold extrusions. And one more naming as impact extrusions. Impact extrusions. So likewise, I want to classify this extrusions processes. This hydrostatic extrusions operated through hydraulics, and the cold extrusion extrusions are operated for understanding. For understanding, I'm telling this is useful for thin materials. And this will be useful for thick materials. So for thick materials. Likewise, we can able to again classify the same extrusion process. Equipment horizontal vertical, temperature hot cold, direction backward direction. Now this hot and cold can be forward backward. Again, this cold can be forward backward. In this forward, I have hydrostatic extrusions. Component is applicable with the hydraulic because then we can able to avoid uh, this uh, friction at the surfaces along with the billet in between the billet and the container. I am using hydraulic. So hydraulic extrusion, cold extrusion is for thick thick uh, thick materials, impact extrusion for thin materials like aluminium. So such uh, again we will see this hydrostatic extrusions number one. I I I am doing this now. In this process, the billet is completely surrounded. Uh, by the pressurized liquid and except where the billet contact the die. This process can be done. What I am doing, you see, you see here, this I have did. This is a forward. This is a forward extrusion method. This is the forward extrusion method. You see, cold under that I have forward. I have kept the billet here. This is the billet. So this is the Billet which is going to come out. Generally, where will be the where will be this uh, friction will takes place? Friction is going to takes place in these locations, in these locations, in these locations, and in the die this part. Yes. Now, 
I am avoiding the frictional pressure in such a way force can be reduced. Therefore, I am using a hydraulic system in between hydraulic system lubricants in between this container and then the workpiece. Therefore, what happens? This lubricant in, is in between here. Therefore, this friction is not happened with container and billet is avoided or reduced. So this has not happened. Then only friction happened which is with die only. So here it is this point that we are not having. So this point where I am not having this point I am not having. This point I am not having. I have I have only at a, this point. This I have reduced. So this point the billet is going to be in contact. The zone at here. This is going to be in contact. This zone is going to be in contact here. This going this is in contact. This is in contact. So we are I'm avoiding the contact, friction contact of the billet and the container only through using hydraulic systems. So such examples can be done. So this is one. One more hydrostatic system, the same. No friction between what is the advantage then? No friction between no friction between a container and the billet reduces the force requirement. You see? No friction between the container and the billet. Container and the billet. Therefore, force requirement is also reduced. Thus, ultimately allows the faster speeds, high reduction ratios. Yes, we can do the faster. Temperatures, low billet temperatures. Billet is not uh, that much heating required. We can do easily. Usually, the ductility of the material increases when high pressure is applied. So, those things also can be done. So, even flow of the material, large billet and, and the large cross section can be extruded. Large material and large extrusions can be done. No billet residue is left on the container walls. The billets have to be prepared by tapering one end so that the matches the dies entirely and will. So we are lightly the billet die is tapered in such a way so those uh, treatment to be done to avoid the friction contact there also. Only cold extrusion is possible because hot extrusions we are doing the circulation treatments may not work. Therefore only cold working is possible here. We have also classified this hydrostatic in the cold working only. You see cold working only I have taken forward and hydrostatic. It is I have not mentioned the hot. So that is uh, possible only in the cold working process. It can be difficult to contain the fluid under the effect of high pressure. So maintenance of this fluid is also very difficult. Leakages may occur. So that is to be taken care carefully. So these are some of the advantages and limitations of hydrostatic applications. Now I am coming to the next other part of impact extrusions. Impact extrusions and cold extrusions. You see, so this impact is a, is a, is a cold manufacturing process similar to the extrusions and like a drawing by which the product is made with a metal slug. So what I want to do now, the slug is, the slug, the slug is pressurized at high velocity with extreme force in the die mold by pulse. The process is restricted for soft metals like lead, aluminium and coppers. Here I have kept by the image itself, we can understand it is pressed over there. We have a die here and we have a workpiece here, red hot conditions or any cold working also. So I have kept here and I am pressing because it is thin material, little thin all lot, we know it of red hot. Normal temperature, it is room temperature, it can able to pressurize. We, we are, the can which we are crushing through hands, the Pepsi, Coca Cola cans we are crushing through hands. Likewise, it is, it is pressed here. So it is when it is pressed, I have a gap between the die and the workpiece. Therefore, punch and the die. So in this gap, it is going to come back again. So it is pressed and it is coming back again. It is finding the path to go out. 
So by this I can able to create a cup and the cup can be created by this impact expression. We are pressing impact is given at the bottom. Impact expressions are done. So metal collapsible tubes I can able to create, disposable tubes I can able to create. So some of the tube items, collapsible thin materials, aluminum lead diagonal can be created. Advantage and limitations of this impact, simple and very economical, suitable for collapsible tubes, production cost is very low and how, because it is a heat treatment we are not done, obviously it is low. Excellent surface finish we are getting and a faster production rate. Limited to soft metals like aluminium and copper and leads. More, more wear, because where is more wear, here there is a wear. Here there is a wear, where is a contact between the billet and the material and the punch, that's a, there is a wear happens. So, die may, die may wear, punch may wear, frequently we should change. So, those things are some of the limitations. Impact extrusions, what I am doing, it is, a, it is a modified form of back cold extrusion process. Material is extruded through a gap between the punch and the die operations to the punch movement suitable for softer materials such as aluminium and alloys we are doing cold extrusions same aluminium and we are giving some punching actions as usual punching has been done used for making of the collapsible tubes housing now I have taken the cold extrusion process cold extrusion forcing similar to the impact extrusions main difference between the side walls much thicker than that of the more height. So here I am not creating the lengthy object. Instead of that I am creating a broad thicker object I am creating. So what happens the large thickness has been kept here. Large thickness has been kept here. And also the fine product also becoming thick. So such a pressing action but the cold same aluminium but the object is going to become thicker. So such a compound is ejected by means of an ejector pen and it is provided here we have ejected pin such a way you will understand it is completely pressing ash action has been done so we can able to do such a things one more variant is there until now we have talked about only bars bars and designs and now I want to take care of any pipe material so what I can pipe means inside a cylinder where there is a hollow what how to take that cylinder how to create that cylinder in the, the bar which is coming out I have kept the bar it is going to come out entirely. This is entirely it is coming. So it is going to come out entirely. So what happens? But I, I but I need now a hollow pipe. What I am doing? I I have I am placing a mantle in between. As usual, forward extrusion process. Ram is there, billet is there, pushing die container all are same. But additionally. I have inserted a fixed mantle on the with respect to ram. What happens? It is already it is inside. It is it is it is also like a die. Where is the space? The space is here. Through the space it should come. Through the space it should come. So in these two spaces, if it is coming out, it is considered as a pipe. It is considered as a hollow. Therefore, this mantle is used. This mantle is used to create to create the hollow cylinder or pipes, tubes or anything. So such that a seamless tubes creations can be done in such a ways. So some of the other methods we have to see, some wire drawing operations, in case we are using a multiple steps, multiple steps then it can be utilized for much more thickness reduction of the this, this we have created this bar, this bar, this bar is again putting inside a further reduction for wire drawing methods. This itself created for 3 mm or 5 mm from the 10 mm and then again we are pressing here to create the wire drawing treatment. See, multiple dies are used, 1, 2, 3, 4, for each die the hole is diverse, this hole is differing, this hole is differing, this hole is differing. Lightly, I am keep on reducing the thickness of the, compressing the thickness of this bar and convert it into the filler wire materials like this. So we can able to do. Where this filler wire, it will be comes in the roller forward, not in the pipe or not in the rod. Rod will be in the straight, large thickness. Filler wires and the small wires like a, like a pen wires it will be like this. So this to be rolled and kept safety. We cannot able to keep the long lengthy wire. Therefore, I am using some drawback systems 
to scroll this wire. So it is coming from here, wire rods, and it is a to be scrolled out there, and we have to create a wire roll. Finally, so this is about the wire drawing or otherwise a tube drawing operations. This can be done in such a way. The summary. In this uh, sessions, we have seen about bulk deformation materials. On that, uh, we have seen number one in general about rolling and the types. And number two, we have seen about the forging. And its types. And in today we have seen about extrusions and its uh, types, types of uh, hot, cold, and wire drawing. In, in in case of other also like wire drawing, wire slash, tube drawing. Here in this uh, hot and cold, forward, backwards. Forward, forward, backwards, and then impact, impact extrusions, cold extrusions, cold forging extrusions, cold extrusions, and hydrostatic. Hydrostatic extrusions. These are big things we have seen in this uh, today's class. The remaining part of the subjects. We'll see you in the next session.